Good morning. You're looking at Village in Motion, and it is Friday, April the 28th, 2017. We're going to be talking with Jane Curtis about flying history. And there's that big question that has been in our minds for a long time, is were the Wright brothers really the first to fly, Jane? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we'll look into that question. That little snatch of music that we had there, Come Josephine and My Flying Machine, sort of sets the period uh, when they did their thing and when actually the other possibles did, was around the turn of the century. Uh -huh. And the, their actual, we'll take a look right away at their actual, uh, we have a picture of a tool we can show on, on the screen, but the, the early plane uh, doesn't look like the planes nowadays, you know, with a, a relatively slender body. Of course, now we have some odd shaped ones. Yeah. The, the, the conventional one, um, it has the two wings, but see, it has no, no landing gear down here. Uh, and it has something, uh, this is a front actually, sticking out in front. This is a balance deal here. And inside is a low motor, you can see that, and has two propellers, and it's what's known as a pusher because the propeller is the back, you know, and by the equal and opposite uh -huh. motion. Sort of like one of those uh, swamp buggies they use down in Florida. I guess maybe sort of, yeah, it looks, looks a little bit like that. Um, but this is the one that was actually actually counted as being being it, and we'll look into a little of the of the other part of it as we had. Must have been a rough landing with that. <laughs> well, they were down uh, on the uh, in the sand dunes the sand. on the Atlantic coast in North Carolina, and you deliberately. Um, did went to a place like that so that you wouldn't just crash. Right. But they, uh, I must remember, we're not here to really describe the all of the details of what that happened, but it's because they're they're interesting. But in, in some of the other some of the other things about it, um, people have wanted to fly for a long time. I don't exactly know when, but you can imagine the early people when they had any consciousness. Here they could walk around on land and get anywhere and stop and do what they wanted. Um, Animals were there doing the same thing. And in, in the water, you had fish and so on. People and animals get in the water. I want to go over there and go over there. But then there were birds. Mm -hmm. And the birds could take off and fly around. But people couldn't do that. You couldn't take a run and sort of do this and take off. Uh, so very early, it became associated with uh, otherworldly things, mm -hmm. divinities often were people who were up there. And of course, angels right. came along as being creatures who, who fly. Um, myths, stories, uh, magic carpets, dream of everybody to just be able to step onto the carpet and say a magic word, you know, and Right, go. right, and so off they go. <laughs> it got going pretty, pretty early. Um, we don't know exactly when the thought occurred. Now, how, how can we surmount this? It must, must have been way, way back. But we do know that the Chinese in the, a couple of centuries BC were very much taken up with kites. Oh, okay. And the idea that maybe you could put something on the kite, you know, and carry it up there. So they did a certain amount of work refining things like air currents and how you, when you're running into the wind and all mm -hmm. sorts of things like that. Uh, but it was not until really considerably later, Leonardo gets credit for being the first to think in terms of right. um, how can we how can we do this? It really wasn't scientific, but uh, officially, but it was scientific in that he observed things and observed birds. But his work, his work, and, and you know diagrams he made and things. Right. And in fact, his he had a design for a parachute that somebody actually built a few years ago and it worked. In the meantime, you had, of course, in the 1600s, you had people sort of thinking about this question and you had Newton's laws of various kinds of people were leading people to think in more scientific lines but the uh, 1700s saw the beginning of, of the hot air balloon well oh, the hot okay. air balloon presumably began a little before the or just just the balloon and you know, uh, hydrogen wasn't discovered until the 1700s and when hydrogen was discovered the hot air balloon gave way to the hydrogen balloon. Mm -hmm. And you had the French army with a core of balloonists. 
uh, up there. And of course, this was, I suppose they were keeping records and so on, but they didn't really have any compendiums of uh, air currents, you know, the way they oh, do for yeah. oceans. Right. It's comparable in many ways what the air does. Like and what happened when you pushed something into that, you know, how you had to uh, stabilize it and all that. Right. But as the 1800s wore on, we got more and more into this. And my favorite candidate, actually, if we could please see our picture number two. My favorite candidate for the first to really have powered flights. This is Henri, Jules Henri Giffard, and he was a French engineer of various things. And he got thinking, he was actually thinking about powered, getting something into the air, uh, uh, empower it, give it oh, power really? so it could move and do things. Uh, and these were the three things that sort of, sort of fell into place for a candidate for the first thing to really fly. It had to be uh, controlled, it had to be able to right. give it direction, keep it up and down, stabilize it. Um, you had to keep it in the air for more than just touch up and come back down. Yeah, there he, that, that came out in 1906, so three years too late. But uh, Alberto was, was using the, the box kite idea still mm -hmm. there. And but when you see the, the next picture, you see a little bump on top. This is a little bump. He was sitting up, on, one of the few pictures I've seen of him, he's smiling <laughs> in that picture. And he's up on top and you can see the beginning of this box kite array. And the, the uh, Wright brothers had, you know, as I mentioned, uh, they had toyed with this thing, but they'd given it up. Because it wasn't practical, for one thing. Now, here is a so-called demoiselle. This, this is one of Alberto's that came out a little later. And he would have uh, made big capital if he could have done or he would have had a great success if he, if he could have done that sooner. But you see, we have the, the rudimentary body right, fuselage there. Right. A lot of the planes in World War I indeed had only the framework. They didn't have a solid thing. Uh, he's sitting in there instead of lying down. You have, a, of course, a, a carriage there, you have the wheels to land. And one of these, yeah, that one has a little wheel on the back. On the back. Which doesn't come in, didn't come into general use till quite a bit later. They had to skid. And the skid skidded along, sometimes worked and sometimes didn't. But you have an elaborate thing at the, at the back there, which was a yeah. combined rudder and a stability one. Because it had, it had to be stable. That was another mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. um, so here was this situation then in December 1903. Not very many people really paid much attention to the Wright brothers, but they had done it. And everybody paid a lot of attention to uh, Alberto, um, and social, a little, little social lion uh, that, that he was. Well, he was a well-known figure, so that would draw people to him anyway. He was a well-known figure as, as a character. And of course, what he did was, was admirable. Sure, uh, sure. Indeed, there was no, no question about that. Um, so the, you know, the various aero clubs got into the act. Now, uh, before we just mention them a little bit, um, I want to show another. This is an example. Uh, uh, the, these two or three people were not the only ones trying, because particularly after 1900, you had all kinds of weird looking. We could sit here from now till 5 o'clock looking at pictures of and these. And we only have a couple of minutes. Peculiar <laughs> where, 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 do we, where do we stand? Uh, yeah, well, we do. But you, you can see that if somebody whomped up a plane like this, and somebody claimed to have done that, it just never public, but you had uh, your mechanism back here, you had a rudder, and you had a stabilizing mechanism. Your engine was up here, and your, your center of gravity had to deal with that. You have a little bathtub here. And I think they actually used bathtubs at one point Did in they? experimenting. Yeah, a little bathtub where the pilot could sit. And you had a gravity tank up here. Okay. And they, they started out using two kinds of engines. One kind was this inline engine, and the other kind was a rotary engine. And there were varieties of, of each one. But that played a role, too, on the development because, oh, and then the skids were in case it should no, nose over when, when they were landing. Uh, and in fact, you had double wheel on this one. 
this um, exhaust was a problem that they had when they began using these because you didn't want to increase the weight of the airplane by having a lot of stuff like this. And yet if you didn't, it would blow right back on, sure. the, on the pilot. Mm -hmm. So you would be... <laughs> yeah. Asphy asphyxiated pretty quickly. You would, and they one of the best British models, in fact, had to be sort of reissued, you know, uh, changed because it came out. If you, you were the pilot sitting here, it came out right here, and, oh, and as, as the plane went, and it blew right back on. But there were, um, I show you this t to mention that there were a lot of other people with ideas. This looks pretty crazy when we think airplanes that we're used to, but it really wasn't. You know, they, they were thinking about all these aspects. You had your power source. Of course, weight was a thing. You had no, no balloon to keep you airborne. Right. And the shape of these wings, now, of course, in the model, they're flat, but that couldn't be flat. And some, uh, particularly Lillian Tal did a lot of work. The, the uh, wings are, are shaped kind of like the ocean waves. So I mean, that the some air are very can, much yeah. that way. Mm -hmm. And it's called camber. And the camber had to be just so, because when the wing went forward, then the air would split going over it. Mm -hmm. And it had to, uh, it had to be a, a, certain, a certain configuration so that a vacuum would be created, and that's what held it up. Mm -hmm. And everybody, it was known as a heavier than air aircraft. 